Hey guys, welcome back to Fantasy Tips. My name is Julian and this is the waiver wire video for week 13 of the fantasy hockey season. In this video, we're going to be talking about players that you should consider adding to your team to help you win this week and future weeks of the fantasy season. Now, before we get started, guys, please leave a like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, follow me on Twitter at Fantasy Tip, always putting updates up there to help you guys out. Now, let's jump right into the schedule for this week. So this week is more of a standard week once again. As you can see, the off nights are Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday, although Tuesday is not super busy, and Thursday is pretty busy, but not incredibly busy. So it's possible that you have room in your lineup on a lot of the nights, so you don't necessarily have to pick up guys who only play on off nights. You can just look and see what your schedule looks like, because everybody's schedule is different, right? Personally, on one of my teams, I have a whole bunch of players that are playing on Friday, even though there's only three games, and I have almost no one playing on Thursday, which is kind of funny. So for me, Thursday is an off night, but for the majority of people, Thursday is absolutely not an off night, and your lineup is probably full. So just make sure to look at your lineup before you just blindly take advice. Oh yeah, this is an off night, this is what I need. Just go and go ahead and look in your lineup before you do anything. Now, one thing to know is that Sunday, there's only one game, and that game is Vancouver versus Washington. So those are teams that you're probably going to end up adding guys from at the end of the week if your matchup is still close. So this week, there are four teams that have really bad schedules, and by bad schedule, I mean they only play one game the entire week. And those teams are Calgary, Edmonton, Minnesota, and Vegas. So it's probably not the best thing to have a lot of players from these teams in your lineup if you want to win this week. So if you do have any low-owned players from these teams, like a Dadanov, a Sean Monaghan, it might be worth considering dropping them for this week. Now, there are four teams that have really good schedules in terms of off nights, and all these teams play on two off nights. The off nights, once again, guys, are Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday. And all of these teams here, Boston, Colorado, Dallas, and Seattle, play on two of those four off nights, which is pretty good. And Boston, Colorado, Seattle, as well as Tampa and Vancouver are actually the only teams this week that have four games scheduled. So Boston, Colorado, and Seattle are definitely good teams to have players from this week. And Vancouver and Tampa don't hurt either, although only one of their games are on off nights. So jumping into forwards that you can consider adding, and number one on my list is Taylor Hall of the Boston Bruins. I don't usually include players over 60% owned, but Taylor Hall has been dropped in a lot of leagues, so it is possible that he is available out there on your waiver wire. Taylor Hall makes for a good addition for the Monday and Wednesday off nights that the Bruins play this week, and the Bruins also play four games, not to mention that David Pasternak is now playing on Taylor Hall's line, so it's definitely a boost for Hall, and Hall has been playing a lot better lately because of it. Then I have Jesper Brad of the New Jersey Devil, and Brad is having an insane career season. He has eight points over his past five games, and he has 32 points in 34 games on the season. He is a little bit streaky, but he should definitely be owned in a lot more than 53% of the leagues. Then I have Anthony Sorelli of the Tampa Bay Lightning, 40% owned. He's playing on a much better line now that Tampa Bay's healthy with Killorn and Stamkos. That's pretty good. And like I said, guys, Tampa Bay play four games this week. One of the only teams that have that schedule. So Sorelli makes for a pretty good ad if you can fit him in your lineup. And then I have Robert Thomas of the St. Louis Blues. The Blues don't have the best schedule in the world this week, but Robert Thomas is skating on that second line, and he has been producing as of late and has honestly produced all year round. And then I have Nino Niederreiter. I've had him on this list for a couple of weeks now, but he's still skating on that top line with Sebastian Ajo, second power play, and he's been playing very, very well. Then as you see over here, I have three Seattle Kraken, Jordan Eberle, Jared McCann, and Yanni Gord. Eberle and McCann play on the top line with Marcus Johansson, and Yanni Gord plays on Seattle's second line. Gord's been pretty good as of late. Seattle didn't play any games last week, but they have a really good schedule this week. And every single Seattle Kraken player is pretty low owned. So these are the three guys I would target if you want those Monday and Wednesday off night games and four games this week. Next is Clayton Keller of the Arizona Coyotes. He's only 29% owned, but he's up to 25 points in 32 games, which is amazing for an Arizona Coyotes player. He's playing very well. He's getting almost a point per game these days, and he has been producing at that pace for many weeks now, so I don't understand why he's only 29% owned. He should definitely be picked up in a lot more leagues. And then I have Dennis Gurianov, who's only 11% owned, but now that he's playing on a line with Van and Sege, had a really good performance in the last game. Had a goal and a couple of assists. That's pretty good. Let's see if he can carry that momentum forward. And Dallas does play on two off nights Wednesday and Friday this week, so I don't mind riding him this week. Next is my Manscaped must-add player of the video, Craig Smith. Get 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com with the code word FANTASYTIP 
That's 20% off and free shipping with the code word FANTASYTIP at manscaped.com. Unlock your confidence, guys, and always use the right tools for the job with Manscaped. Now, why is Craig Smith my Manscaped must-add player of the video? It's quite simple. He's playing on that top line with Marshawn and Bergeron. Not only that, he has been producing on that top line, and Boston has a really great schedule this week with those Monday, Wednesday off nights, and they play four games this week. Now is the perfect time to add Craig Smith to your team because he should really help you next week. I'm not saying that this experiment of having Craig Smith on that top line is going to last forever, but right now it's working, and he should at least stay on that line next week. Next are Marco Rossi and Matt Boldy of the Minnesota Wild, both really interesting prospects that I like a lot. And right now they're getting a really nice opportunity on the second line in Minnesota because both Kaprizov and Eriksson Ek are out. So therefore, they have a really good opportunity. They're playing with Nick Foligno on that second line. Marco Rossi is actually also getting top power play time, which is excellent. And he was someone I was really high on at the beginning of the season. After one game, Boldy looked better than Rossi did. But let's see if they can make an impact. The only thing, guys, is that Minnesota only plays one game this week, so they're not going to really have that big of an opportunity to really show how good they can be because Eric Sinek could possibly be back once Minnesota plays, not this week, but next week. So, yeah, they're interesting ads, and it's possible that they'll stick in the NHL, but when Eric Sinek comes back, Rossi probably gets relegated to the third line if he does stay in the NHL, which makes them significantly less valuable. Definitely add them if you can, but definitely tamper your expectations as well. Next is Nils Hoaglander playing on a line in Vancouver with JT Miller, which is pretty good place to be. And also he plays on the second power play and Vancouver has four games this week, one of only a few teams to have that. I don't mind Nils Hoaglander as an ad, especially since he likes to shoot the puck a lot, so has a relatively safe floor. Next is JT Comfer of the Colorado Avalanche, 8% owned, plays on a line with Kadri and Burakovsky, and Colorado also plays on some off nights this week on Monday and Friday, and they play four games. So JT Confer makes for a pretty good ad. One thing to note is that if Natushkin does come back from injury this week at some point, then Confer probably does get knocked off that second line. But at least for those Monday and Tuesday games, Confer makes for a pretty good streamer. Then I have Max Comtois of the Anaheim Ducks, and he had a pretty brutal start to the season, and then he got injured. But now they're really giving him an opportunity to seize his moment, and he's being played on the top line, getting a lot of power play time, and so far, so good. He has two points in his last two games, and let's see if he can keep that momentum going. I don't mind him as an ad since he's only 7% owned. Next is Tanner Pearson of the Vancouver Canucks, only 5% owned, but he's been really good lately, and he gets to play on a line with Elias Pettersson and Connor Garland. That's a really good spot to be. Also gets PP2 time, which doesn't hurt, and he makes for an excellent ad for this week, especially since Vancouver plays four games, and Pearson has a safe floor since he shoots the puck a nice amount. Then I have Nick Foligno of the Boston Bruins, 3% owned. Not my favorite ad in the world, but if you're desperate, Foligno does get top power play time in Boston, along with Marshawn, Pasternak, and Bergeron, so it definitely doesn't hurt to add him if you're desperate and you need someone that could potentially put up points for you. And then I have Eric Howla of the Boston Bruins who plays on that second line with Taylor Hall and David Pasternak at the moment. And he's been playing pretty well ever since that line has been put together. So I don't mind that ad as well, especially for those off nights Monday and Wednesday. Then I have Martin Furk of the Los Angeles Kings, only 1% owned, currently playing on the top line with Adrian Kempe and Anze Kopitar. Does that stick? Maybe, maybe not. It's it's probable that once Yafalo comes back, which he might come back as early as Monday, that he takes back his spot on the top line. But Firk looked pretty good in his first appearance on that top line. I've always liked the guy. He shoots the puck a lot. He has an explosive slap shot. He's very, very strong. So we can see. I'm not necessarily picking up Firk right now, but he's definitely someone to monitor. If Yafalo comes back on Monday and Firk is still playing on that top line with Kopitar, then definitely I'm consider grabbing him. And last but not least, I have Marcus Johansson of the Seattle Kraken. He gets to play on the top line with Eberle and with McCann and on that top power play with those two guys as well. Now, Seattle is not a great team, but they do have a really good off-night schedule. So Marcus Johansson makes for not the worst grab in the world if you're desperate. Jumping into some defensemen now, and all these guys on my list this week are completely new. They weren't in my last video with one exception. If you guys want more defensemen that you can consider adding, go ahead and check out my last waiver wire video right up there. Those defensemen are definitely still good defensemen to add. I just didn't want to repeat content week after week. 
So first on my list for defensemen is Bowen Byram of the Colorado Avalanche, 34% owned, and he's finally back from injury. He was out for a long time, but in his last game, he got a goal and an assist, and he actually saw a little bit of power play time. Now, if that was due to them being up big and them just deploying a power play with Byram and Eric Johnson, yeah, probably. But Byram definitely looks good. He's on a pairing with Sam Girard, and... Overall, I think he makes for a pretty decent ad, especially since Colorado has not played a lot of games this year, so has more games coming up in the future as well. And then I have Damon Severson, who could also be a Manscaped must add, if you ask me, because Dougie Hamilton is out for a good while, and therefore, Damon Severson is on that top power play in New Jersey. If you're a Hamilton owner and Severson is still floating out there, you definitely have to grab him because he is his direct replacement, and he has actually been playing pretty well in that spot. Then I have Noah Dobson of the New York Islanders, 26% owned, and he's also a must-add right now. The Islanders didn't play any games last week, so I understand that he wasn't added in that many leagues, but now that the Islanders are going to be playing games again, he has to be added. This guy has been absolutely insane. He's been probably the best player on the Islanders, except for maybe Barzell. He's been manning the top power play and has just looked great, getting points every single game. Absolute must-add at this point. Then I have Ryan McDonough of the Tampa Bay Lightning, 12% owned. He's pretty good for getting you some peripherals and could potentially pot a point here and there as well. Doesn't hurt for a week that Tampa Bay plays four games. Next is Brady Shea of the Carolina Hurricanes, and in his last three games, he has two goals and two assists, which is pretty good. Do I absolutely love the ad? No, but he is being tested currently on the second power play unit in Carolina, which gives him a little bit more upside. And honestly, while he's hot, it doesn't hurt adding him. I just don't think it's necessarily going to be a very long-term ad. Next is TJ Brody, 3% owned only, but he's riding a three-game goal streak and a four-game point streak with six points in those four games. Now, he's not my favorite defenseman, obviously, but as long as this guy stays this hot, why not add him? If you're in a super deep league and there's no defenseman better than him available, why not give Brody a go? Let's see if he can keep up the hot play for a little bit longer. Next is Jeremy Swayman of the Boston Bruins, 62% owned, a little bit higher owned than I usually include on these lists, but Boston does play on four games this week, so Swayman will get two of those starts and will play on an off night, which is pretty helpful. Then there's Ottinger and Holtby, both about 50% owned in Dallas. They split the starts 50-50, so if you're desperate for a goalie and one of those guys is available, they'll at least get half the starts in Dallas. Then Peter Morazic of the Toronto Maple Leafs will have a very nice spot start against Arizona in all likelihood on Wednesday. So that's definitely a game that I want to be streaming Peter Morazic for. And then I have Alexander Georgiev and Chesterkin was added to the COVID protocol on Thursday. So in all likelihood, Georgiev will get the start on Monday for the Rangers. After that, Chesterkin should be back though. Then I have Uko Pekka of the Buffalo Sabres, and finally Buffalo has a nice schedule. Again, last week they only played one whole game, but now they play three games as usual, and Pekka should probably see all three starts this week. Only 22% owned. Go ahead and grab him. He's been pretty good. Then I have Pavel Francouz, and he's set to play two games this week because Colorado plays two sets of back-to-backs this week. So he will see two of the starts, and if he plays better than Kemper does, he really does have an opportunity to steal the crease. Let's see how it goes. Then I have Anton Forsberg of the Ottawa Senators, and... The Sens have been getting a lot of games canceled, I understand that, but they still do play two games this week, and Forsberg should start both of those games, which is not a bad place to be. Then I have Jonas Korpisalo of the Columbus Blue Jackets. With Merzlikens out, Korpisalo should continue to get the bulk of the starts until Merzlikens can come back into the lineup. As of right now of this recording, I have no idea what the severity is of Merzlikens' injury, but... Until he does come back, Corpus Allo is definitely a decent streamer. We'll get all the starts. Then I have Brian Elliott of the Tampa Bay Lightning. And Tampa Bay play back-to-back Monday and Tuesday. So Elliott will get one of those two starts. So I don't hate the stream. Karel Melka of the Arizona Coyotes, 5% owned. He's going to get most of the starts in Arizona going forward. Wedgwood really did not look good in his last start. And Vaymelka has looked good in his last couple of starts now. So he should continue to get the bulk of the starts. And that's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching all the way through. Please leave a like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and I'll catch you in the next episode of Fantasy Tipped.